Welcome back to the Vintage Fisherman. I'm John. Today on the bench I've got an old Pin Pier 209. Uh, it's, looks like it's been sitting in a barn. The handle's pretty well roached on it. Um, it, uh, it functions otherwise. The level line's going back and forth. So it's a little squeaky. A little dry. Yeah. So let's take it apart. Clean it up. Make it look new. Make it work new. Start out by taking the handle off. You got a handle screw or the retaining screw for the handle knob. That handle is probably going to go in the trash. I think I've got some more. Take the drag knob off. And then we can take some screws out of it. It's been a while since I took a 209 apart. I don't use these reels. I bought this reel to... Uh, to clean and sell, I, I, I won't use this reel. I'm not a not a level line level wine guy unless I'm using a bait caster. And even then, I take some of my Abby Garcias and make them into CTs, which is basically a non-level line 6500 or 6501 in my case because I use left-handers. Got a video coming up on how to make a 6501 into a CT. As soon as I get the parts in. I always start out on the drive side. You can start out on the other side. It don't matter. Yeah, there went one screw. I'll find it later. Alright. Uh, this spool this pulls out. It's got a drive gear on the end there. Yeah, it spools. You got some green crusty on there. I can I can make it look better. I can't make it go away. Here's the hood, the level line. Uh, let's take that. Take the Paul retainer out of there. I'm back to shooting with my um, cell phone. Uh, I wasn't crazy with the job that my very expensive camera that I bought was doing. It was too hard to uh, to edit, to be honest with you. And it just took up a lot of space. I was doing all my editing on my phone, so I said, well, if I'm gonna do it on my phone, I'll do it all on my phone. So I'm back to my phone. Underneath this screw here, there's supposed to be a spare pawl. I'm going to go ahead and take it out because we'll take a look at it. This reel has been used quite a bit, actually. Yeah, this that pawl shows some wear. We'll clean it up. Doesn't really matter which one we put back in it. We'll just put one in it. screw out. There's the worm. And we'll take the drive or the um, clicker side apart. I keep the screws separate from sides. I know which screws go where because the short screws always go in the base. Or the stand, as Pin calls it. Uh, most of these parts are available for this um, 209. In fact, I think they still actually make this reel. If I'm not mistaken. This is an older one. I can tell you it's older just by the color of the uh, Bakelite side plates.
lots of people use these reels. Um, they're great for um, jigging off of wrecks and stuff. Uh, if you're not using a super heavy line and fighting super huge fish, uh, level line's the way to go if you're going, if you're fishing deep. Sometimes they, they don't want to cooperate. They sure don't want to oh, mess it up. So, uh, yeah. This, this uh, ring's never been off of here. Let's see if I can do. Take an X Acto knife and put right down in that slice and try to get it to without cutting myself here. You know, without messing up the Bakelite plates, start walking that plate off with it. Do you have to take this ring off? Well, I guess you have to. But, I do. Mm. It's going to fight the whole way. Of course, like I said, I don't want to mess up the Bakelite. You can very easily chip a whole chunk out of this bake light. And then when you do, then you gotta go find one that matches. And they did kind of change the tint to this bake light over the years. Some of them are more of a red than a brown. There. Got it off without any major damage. That gear came out of there. I'm pretty sure it goes in like that been a while but I feel pretty confident on that you can take uh, take this other gear off you take the clicker the spring for the clicker off first and this is the spring clips on both sides of the pointer for that and then that gear can come off with that screw now this whole side of this reel is apart. Now, over here, we have the same issue here. Let's try to get this ring off without messing it up. It's been a while since I've done one of these. I hope I don't, I hope I don't break this. So. Break this in plate if I do. I'm, I'm probably going to have a parts reel out of it. They're worth more if you can keep them all originally, you know. At least with the end plates. All looking the same and stuff. You see how I'm doing it? I'm just taking the exacto knife and going right down in that crack. And just real carefully walking my way around until it pops off. And that way you don't tear up the end plate. It's just dry. It's uh, Anyway, here's the, the adjuster for the worm gear where you adjust the tension and adjust you know, any kind of in play you might have there. You've got, uh, let's see if this is the right size. Let me get the right size socket here. We'll take this pushing off bearing. The pin, I think pin calls it a bearing. There's no bearings in it, it's just a bushing screws down in there. Got the four bridge screws. You're gonna have a dog spring under here. The paw. The entire reverse paw. And dog. Now you don't want to lose that when you take it out. I don't see the spring for the entire reverse dog, so where did it go? Not in my hand anywhere. I 
didn't fall out. So it's missing a part. How's it missing a part? It's a little bitty, little bitty inline spring that goes in there. And it did not fall out of the reel. So yeah, it goes in right there. It's, it wasn't there. Um, I don't remember if I checked the anti-reverse on the reel or not. Let's go ahead and take the free spool lever off. Do the eccentric. Comes off there. This pops out. And there is a spring on that. But unless that spring... And I got more springs, folks. Don't, don't get me wrong. I mean... It's not the end of the world, but uh, if I don't have to put a part in this reel, I'd be a lot happier. It's not uh, it's not a beauty by any means, but let's take the drag apart. Got a fiber washer that was underneath the gear and on there, and then inside the gear, you've got a drag stack. You've got You got a drag stack that's together on. Oh, uh, what the heck? Is that another washer down in there, maybe? No. So, this was together on. Pretty sure it's supposed to have a fiber washer down in there. Then, then this washer. Then another fiber washer. Then the eared washer. These are leather washers, by the way. It's supposed to look like that, but there's missing one washer. So we aren't missing two parts in this reel. And I've got, I've got the washers. I'm not worried about that either. And I did lose a screw on the floor. So <laughs> I'm going to clean this stuff up and come back to you. And, uh, well, it might be a day or two before I get back. Gotta go find parts and stuff. Hey, thanks for watching. All right, I'm back. Um, <laughs> this is the, uh, pin, pin pier 209. And I want to answer a couple questions I've gotten, um, through some of the fishing reel sites, uh, collector sites and stuff. Somebody said, what's all that shiny stuff all over your real parts when you lay them out? And it's WD-40. And uh, I go through a lot of this, a couple cans a month probably. Um, I have a whole vat full of it that I clean the side plates with. I scrub them with a brush and WD-40 and it gets all that old grease out. And uh, why do I do that? Well, um... WD-40 is a great protectant. Uh, it's a it's a silicone-based uh, penetrant, so it will it will get down in the pores of the metal and uh, give it a little bit of a barrier before the salt starts eating into it. And uh, that's why. I soak, when I finish tearing the reel down and I clean everything, I lay them all all the parts out. And what I want to get soaked with WD-40. I spray it down. Of course, I don't want the drag to be soaked by WD-40. But um, that's why things look the way they do. Uh, shiny. Now it's dried up. See, it's just a little bit of a film on it. And uh, I'll wipe off that excess with, um, with these wiping cloths from Ace Hardware. You know, they come in a whole bag. And I just throw them away when I get done used them. And... Uh, that's how that whole thing works. But uh, this particular reel was missing a couple parts, and I dug through my stash and I got a, a drag washer that it was missing. I found the spring for the anti reverse dog, 
that was missing. So I've got all those parts. Now I'm going to put this bad boy back together. Oh, and also I had another handle. Um, uh, the handle was with this reel was also a yellow knob, but it was it was broken. It, it, somebody had dropped it on the handle. And the handle itself is still intact, but the rivet here in the back um, was loose, so the whole handle had a wobble in it. So I uh, fixed that up by just grabbing another handle out of my stash. In fact, all my handles are for sale. I got, got them on a couple of sites for sale. But uh, anyway. Let's uh, let's put a reel together. Um, it's been a long time since I built one of these, so bear with me. I'm probably gonna make a few mistakes as I go. Um, these reels are a little more complicated than the average pin reel. Um, of course, I use pin precision grease on everything. Uh, I sometimes use super lube, full uh, multi-purpose synthetic grease. Um, I think the pin grease is a little bit better, to be honest with you. Why do I use the other? Um, well, if I open up a reel, like some of the Shimano's have a, a, have a white, a clear grease in them, and I'll use it on them, so that's kind of the reason for that. So let's put the spool tensioner back in. That thing's kind of dirty. Sometimes the cleaning process isn't always thorough. So you just go back and you fix it. I use a lot of these um, pipe cleaners. You can get them at most arts and crafts stores. Hobby Lobby, you know. Michael's, whatever you have in your area. Alright, there's the spool tension knob. We have a spare pawl here. So I'm going to look at the two pawls and we'll get the prettiest one and use it for the worm. And the other one is going to get put down in here with a little bit of oil. So it doesn't ever lock up in there and get it out if you're fishing or whatever. You have to have to change a pole in the middle of fishing. I, I don't know. I've never done that. Then again, I if I'm fishing with a real lot, I'm maintaining it every year anyway. So the winter time is uh, my time of straightening up my reels is already over with. I did all mine back in uh, October after I got done with the king fishing season. And another knob that goes in right here. Or actually it's a screw or a bushing. And this is the last uh, video I'm going to shoot on this workbench, uh, the way it is. I'm getting ready to redo the whole thing, so stay tuned for that. A little, just a little dab of grease with this gear right down in here. Right here. And that one. In there. This one gets a screw on. I don't know. I there's there's mixed feelings about grease uh, putting grease on these plastic gears. I I sometimes do and I sometimes don't. And, and I'm just going to put it that way. I'm inconsistent about it. Maybe I'm just waiting to see which one works the best. I'm not a level wine guy. The only level wines I really use are Swedish made Abby Garcia's, the cans. I love those things. I use them a lot. I'm not big on anything else that's got a level wine. And I even take those and make them uh, CTs. 
I'm going to do one of those pretty soon. I've got parts on the way. So there's the gears in there for the level line. And here's the spring for the bait clicker. And it'll go in there like that. A little dab of grease right there just for the screw. It's a little brass screw. Um, I'm also going to grease that so it doesn't get locked up at any point. This is the um, bait clicker. And then side plate, or the side ring. Correction. sometimes need to be straightened out a little bit and I'll show you how I do that. Um, get yourself a set of these uh, alignment pins. These are this is craftsman you can probably get it in any Northwest Ace. You can put it in there and just kind of work it around and it will center up those holes so you'll have a lot less aggravation when you go to put it together. So your two bottom holes for your base are right here. That should be good. Yeah, see it's not it's not lined up right, so still working on it here. There's a tab that that plate's supposed to snap into, so let's see if we can't do it to do so. It's important that it does that. Take a little more. There it goes. Yeah. All right. So we got that lined up. There's a tab right there on the side plate that comes through the right, the side ring. Okay. Got that. Now your the one bar has a groove in it. That's where your your level line guide goes back and forth. It's important to get that lined up right, but for now we're just going to get it in there to help us hold this whole thing together and it will go up here on top. Your screws you have three long and two short. The two short ones go in the stand. Pin calls their base a stand. Okay, Just so everybody's on the same page. Slick from all the WD-40. Only drawback to having all that WD-40 on the bench at one time. And I'm just going to kind of, like I said, just loosely put this thing together. I'm gonna, and I went a little fast there, but I take a little bit of grease and put in the ends of those those uh, ball crossbars so that the grease uh, will work as an anti-corrosion, a barrier against salt corrosion. I build every reel like I'm going to be fishing with it in some of the worst conditions you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> I'm just going, to, just going to throw that out there. That's just how I am. So, just look in the situation over here. I believe there's a bar that goes right there. Grease. You can usually look at the bars and tell which part of the reel they went on. This one's kind of corroded looking, so it's probably down here towards the stand. Some place it caught more, more salt than the others did. Now the bars that just go across that don't have the uh, cross line or level line right in it, you can go ahead and tighten them down. one with the level line. I'm going to leave it just a little bit loose where I can still spin it because i got to line all this good stuff up. And then the stand is next. 
Um, I'll put a little bit of grease right there so the screws go into it. You get the uh, I'm gonna end up dropping this on the floor probably. Go chasing after it for 15 minutes, but we'll see here. Sometimes I'd be alright with it. There we go. You can go ahead and tighten these stand bolts up too. Stand screws. Look, don't kill them, they're brass. Brass going into brass. You know, 10 inch pounds or whatever is, is pretty pretty much a, a heavy torque for these things. The worm gear goes in here and you'll notice one end of the worm gear has two flats on it. That's where the gear drops. It goes in there and it'll slide into the gear. See, it turns that gear. Well, the gear turns this. Let me rephrase that. So We'll put that on there. The level line We'll go on, and this is when we can get it kind of lined up with this. Look, it's all going to try to fall apart on you, folks. Just uh, be patient with it. The uh, worm drive goes in next, and it's going to be a pain. It's the way they made this reel looks My, my pliers have gotten magnetized somehow. I don't know what they're doing now. That's just really odd. And that's not helping me any. All right, once you get that dropped in there, if you take your uh, level line, turn it a little bit, it'll catch, okay? Spin it out here to where you can kind of get to it. Now, your Abu Garcias, they'll have a little shim in there. And you don't want to lose that shim. That's important. It's a preload shim. But the pins, the pin doesn't, they're not, they're just not that fancy. But pin's simple, and there's not many things can go wrong with them. So, you got to love that simplicity from the pin. Now to make sure everything's working the way that it should, just give that gear a spin and that worm will turn and now we want to hang on to this and I'm going to tighten that screw down because I've got this level line riding in that groove like it should be and it's wanting to turn on you of course. But I think I got it good enough for the initial uh, putting the reel together. So, well, that might be hard to see, but this, the top of the line guide is in this groove. Everything's kind of flopping around here, folks. Then you got this um, shield. It will sit in there like that. Okay. I'm going to put the spool in alright and if this were a uh, a jiggy or squitter jig master or squitter you could Put the other ring on over here but this one is not so it doesn't have a quick takedown so now i got to build this part of the reel the drive side 
first thing you got is um, you've got a fiber washer that will go on the sleeve. They call this the sleeve. This is the bridge. This is the sleeve with the anti-reverse dog and a paw in it. Then your gear goes on. Since I build every reel like it's going to fight Moby Dick in the middle of the ocean, it's your, it's your last meal. Um, I put a little bit of cow's grease on it. That first drag washer will go in. You got a keyed washer, like a double D looking thing. Keyed washer goes on. I'm going to try to slow this down for you a little bit here. All pin conventionals, with the exception of the, uh, I'm talking about cylinders and the number reels, you know, when you get into some of the uh, bigger ones, they're, they're a different drag system, but just about everything has got the same very reliable drag system. Okay, so you drag a uh, leather washer, and then, then you got the eared washer. It's got two little ears on it to go into a slot in the gear. And you got another leather washer. And it goes in there, and then another keyed washer, and it goes in there, and a sleeve. I did not notice a uh, beveled washer on this particular reel. Well, we'll see how it works when I get it together. I can always find something that will work for a double washer. Okay, I'm going to put that up. Oh, me. A little bit of grease here where the eccentric goes through. The eccentric spring right in there. So the eccentric will come in like this. Get it close and you take the lever, put it on from the back side, and it's kind of whoops. A little dab of grease and screw that precariously holds it all together for a second. And then we can check that. It's a pain, folks. I ain't gonna lie. I'm not even gonna pretend it ain't. This goes in there. And once again, I, I use whatever tools I can find. I, I'm a snap-on guy at work. Well, I use a little bit of everything at work, but I have a preference for snap-on. Sometimes my, because I pay as I go, I don't have an account with Snap-on. They hate that. 
the heat guys pay as they go, but I, I'm not giving them half my paycheck. Um, all right. Springs go in like that. I don't know if I showed it to you. I put that knob. That knob's got a spring under it. That's a tensioner knob for the level line. You've got. The, I might have called that the bridge, but this is actually the bridge. And it will go in like this. You know, grease this up here. I don't know, maybe that is the bridge. I don't know. I'll have to, I'll have to look it up and see. I don't want to use the wrong nomenclature and get it well all messed up on it. That slot in that gear comes up towards the spool. And it'll go in there like that. A little bit of grease here for the jack plate. I do know I got that in there. Jack plate we'll go in like that, and it kind of just holds it all together there, folks. Okay, it gets complicated from here. I'm gonna have to set this down for a minute. I didn't get that spring out of that baggie. This is like a three dollar spring, folks. Um, you know, it sucks the part, the reel came in without the parts in it, but it, it happens. And that spring is, you can barely even recognize it. If it falls out, you'll never see it. And it could have happened. I could have lost it while I was taking the reel apart. So you're going to put an all-threaded screw in this bottom hole right here. I call it the bottom hole. And then you're... Well, kind of hang on to that for a minute. I'm way off. I'm way out of kilter here. This has got to go. I'm not too sure why I don't have a bell washer in this thing. But it's got to have one, so I may go dig one up out of my parts here real quick. That's it's got to have one, or it's just going to have all or nothing drag. There's not going to be any real tension on. I'm going to, I'm going to venture away for just a second, and uh, I will be right back with to finish the video. Okay, I'm back. I'm just trying to make sure I get this thing together right. I found some bevel washers. These are off a of squitter, but they're the same size. They'll go in, they oppose each other, so they create like a spring. Those didn't oppose each other too well. I guess they'll work fine like that. And then the collar goes down on there. And that's not going to work. I can tell you we're off with that. It's going to be an all or nothing drag also. So we're going to go with one of these bevel washers. Two will not do. It's too much. Two is too much. I doubt this reel has more than a couple pounds of drag anyway. Alright, let's try this again. Third, take three on this uh Get around to putting this bridge in there. I'm gonna hold that that screw, the all threaded screw, in place. I'm going to take this gear assembly and hold my mouth just right. I'm gonna put it in there like that, and I'm going to give this thing a rotate. Everything's falling apart. I'm going to rotate it around so it's about right there. Now, I'm not worried about that sleeve falling out. I'll put it back. I can put it back in after I get it to go. The screw goes up. The anti-reverse dog goes in like this. Put that in there. Okay, and it, it'll ride against the anti-reverse ratchet. That little bitty spring goes right in here so I'm gonna put some grease in there and if all the planets line up and I do my job right here I can get it in there and it won't fly away on me 
Now I can slide this around and get that screw started. Lord have mercy. You're definitely messing with me here. Something's not quite in place. Another all threaded screw will go in the other bottom hole. I call those the bottom holes, okay? Put it in there and get it get it a couple threads started. Then you're gonna get the screws that have the smooth and just a little bit of thread at the end, they go where the springs are. And the reason why they did that is they, they don't want that spring to hang up on that on the threads of the screw. If you put the wrong screw in there, it will, the jack plate will, it will not release properly. And I've had it happen a couple times. Get that on there. Tighten it down. And once again, you don't have to jack these things real tight, just couple fingers on the screwdriver, you know. Over tightening them, I've seen them crack the plates. When you turn it, it should click. You know, put some grease on this jack plate. The jack plate slides in. The jack plate releases the gear from the spool. Okay? how that works. Alright. We will put this cover on. Once again it has a it has a tab that's got to go down on. Got it lined up pretty good first time on that one. And um, I've already already greased all the holes there. I'm going to put a little bit of, I like a little bit of grease where that gear goes up and down on that spool. And we'll take some oil and put on the very end of the spool. I don't think anybody would ever cast one of these things, but really, who knows? <laughs> I'm sure it's possible. It ain't for me. And you'll line up your spool shaft into the pinion gear, slide it down, hold your mouth right, and it should all snap into place. The longer screws, of course, go up here on the bars, the crossbar. Three of those. Look, you're not tightening everything down just yet. Oh, wow, this thing. There it goes. It seems to have snapped right into place for me. Now, level line reels are a little more complicated than a regular conventional reel. It's just the way it is. It's got to be ready to um, contort yourself to get it all. Get them all started. Don't tighten any of them down. Man. Just get them started. A couple, couple of turns. Now you can go ahead and tighten them down. I'll start with the stand. Get those tight first, then move up here to the this upper bar. 
move this bar. And come over here and the last screw is here. Now I've got one more screw on the other side on that upper bar. I need to tighten down to see a little bit further. Alright. I hope I got it all lined up good. We're going to find out here in just a minute. me I do. Alright, the sleeve goes back on, or bushing, um, whatever you want to call it. A little bit of grease where the star goes, the star drag, the numbers always go down. It doesn't really matter, but it just aesthetically looks a little better. Usually one side of the star drag is a little bit more polished than the other before they put the chrome on it. It's usually the side opposite the numbers. Once you get that on there, you can put your handle on, and uh, yeah, this, this is going to be good. This is going to be good. So, and you got the handle uh, nut, screw, whatever you want to call it. And then we'll find out if everything's going to work right on this reel. Put it on there and tighten it down. If you put it on there and you tighten it down, or one of the grooves is lined up with the hole. With it, Retainer screw goes. That's all, that's good enough. You don't have to. You know this reel's got a little bit of play, so we'll, we'll take some of the play out of it. Just a little, little bit on. Okay. And that little bitty screw. Go on there. Let's see how many times I can chase this one to the floor. There we go. Good. Right, we're doing good tonight. We didn't have to chase after anything. Let's just see if it works. Yep, drag is working. Yep. Oh yeah. Yeah, it wouldn't have worked without that beveled washer. Two beveled washers probably be better. I don't know though. I don't know if they've got enough room to get two of them in there. But, uh, yeah. You see how you got all that play? That's what this knob right here is for. You can adjust that play out of there. You want just a hair bit of play in it. Perfect. That level line should go side to side and not miss a beat. It shouldn't get hung up at the end. It shouldn't get wobbly. It's going to have a little bit of wobble, but not a lot. So we got that done, we can put a little bit of, I use oil on that worm gear, and that worm gear was like brand new by the way, I didn't, didn't make, make a note of that when I was putting the uh, reel together, it's, it's in really nice shape. Let's just see how she free spools. I gotta get a little bit of slop out of it. Just a little bit of side to side, folks. It'll get looser. There it goes. Yep, it's working right. We can go through and oil everything now. Right. Take the... Uh, rag and wipe it all down and we have a really nice pier 209 made by pin i'm going to be selling this reel let me get this thing back in frame lock wipe it down like i said i will be selling this reel be listed pretty soon for sale in pretty good shape. It's got just a little bit of pitting on it here and there. Um, I was able to get all the corrosion off the spool. It wasn't bad. If it would, if it had been a little worse than it was, I probably couldn't have got it. Um, the ultrasound machine I use will take that corrosion off the spools if it's not real pitted. If it's just like a surface corrosion, it will take it out of there. And, um, 
there it is, folks. There's a really pretty 209. So thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. I'm, I'm getting my channel off the ground, and uh, you know I, I've got I've got a lot of people watching, but not many people subscribing. Um, I don't make my living doing this by any means, but you know it wouldn't be bad if I could. <laughs> uh, I am getting close to retirement age. I've got three more years of uh, work, and I'm going to retire. So. Thank you for watching. John the Bennett Fisherman, come back and see me.